Hey everyone, this is the perfect time of year to start thinking about filling your fly box for next summer. We just want to start an interactive segment on our website that will help you to do that. We're just going to share some of our tips and time savers. If you have any questions or comments that you'd like to pass on to us or ask us, uh, just email me at jamie at fullersmboc.com. We're going to try to keep this segment going all winter long to uh, keep you into the flies and fill your boxes for next year. Thanks. We're going to start these tips out pretty basic and they're going to work into some more advanced things as the winter goes on. Uh, but the first tip is keep your fly area clean. I'm not always the best at that, as my wife will tell you, but it definitely helps as far as knowing what material you have so you don't end up buying duplicates or a lot of the things that you don't need if you already have it somewhere where you lost it. And just, just finding things as far as your scissors or when you set them down, if, you're, if everything's cluttered, it just makes things more difficult and it wastes a lot of time. Um, here are some examples of how I keep my area clean and keep some things organized. First off, I have what, what I call my fly tying closet. It's just a uh, kind of a little side thing in our basement that I have put some hangers up. Um, hang all my material, you know, separate it like the hackles by color or size or what have you. Um, you know, just, just keep things up out of the way, easy to see. Um, I do have things stuffed in drawers, but uh, if, if you can keep it up where you can see it, it definitely helps when you go to look for it. Uh, if you don't have anywhere where you can hang things up uh, and you need to throw things in drawers, uh, this is a nice tip I saw the other day. Just get a shower ring and clip all the different um, you know, colors of the same thing onto a shower ring. That way it's all together, so if you do have it in a drawer, you can pull all those out at once and you know you don't you don't have to sort through everything else just to find that that one kind of material you need one of the biggest time savers uh, and, and involves keeping your area clean is tying more than one of the same flies at a time uh, a lot of people say I'm too ADD to sit down and tie you know multiples of the same fly but it really saves you time and it keeps your area clean and it'll it'll maximize the time you have at your bench when you tie multiple of the same fly, it's good to lay everything out ahead of time. Uh, I was saying if you tie multiples, it saves you time. So I like to tie anywhere from six to two dozen flies at a time, and I'll lay everything right out. I have stuff laid out for uh, a borcher special, and I have you can see I have the six turkey quills for the body, um, the hackles paired up and pre-sized, which I'll talk about a little bit more in a minute, uh, and, and paired up with a brown and a grizzly. Uh, pulse material and the uh, tailing stuff so all I need to do is sit down and start tying. What this does by setting everything out it allows you to leave everything out if you if you need to get up and, and do something else real quick or if you're interrupted and you need to stop you come back and all this stuff is sitting out ready to go again. Um, that and you kind of get some muscle memory as far as tying the same fly over and over uh, that's one of the biggest marks of a, of a good tire is if you take two of the exact same fly and set them next to each other, how much alike they are. And the more you tie the same fly repetitively, the better and better those are going to get. So this really helps uh, you as far as your speed and the quality of your flies. I had mentioned before about sizing your hackle. This is one of the things that saves me a tremendous amount of time. Uh, it makes my time at the bench a lot more productive. And sizing hackle is something you can do while you're watching a movie, or e I even have the, my wife drive, and I size hackle when we're on longer trips. Uh, like I said, it saves a tremendous amount of time, makes your flies a lot more accurate if you actually put each feather on a on a uh, scale, and you know just just makes your flies a lot more consistent all around. What I start out by doing is taking a a, a neck and taking one side of it, a neck or a saddle, either one, and, and just peeling off a good number of hackles. Okay? You can see that's a pretty good clump of hackles. Next, after taking the hackles off, I uh, just kind of set them aside and I mark. I take bins and mark them uh, according to the size that I think are going to be on that, that saddle or the neck. Uh, I have these marked as size 14s, 12s, eights and tens and you know then 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 according to how big they are on your gauge uh, just put them in the corresponding buckets um, for my hackle gauge 
I use uh, Dave Brandt's uh, Tide True. I like this one because it had the uh, you know the holes in it, and that way I could just put a nail in a board, and I could I could draw a full circle around the nail, uh, and that way I have the whole radius of of the hackle gauge. Most hackle gauges you buy in stores um, aren't mounted on full boards either. They're they're very small. Um, they're they're a little cumbersome to work with. Uh, this one I can take anywhere. Like I said, I do it in a car. I do it while I'm sitting on a couch upstairs watching a movie, um, and just kind of utilizing that time. So when I when I do get down here to tie some flies, um, I'm not wasting my time sizing hackle. The last tip I'm going to cover is tools. Uh, the less you can use tools, the more time you're going to save. Each time you pick up a tool and set it down is, is a couple seconds that if you can eliminate that step, it's going to save you some more time. Um, one of the biggest things is trying to keep your scissors in your hand all the time. Uh, if you time yourself, uh, which is something I like to do also, uh, kind of make it a game, you know, set up a stopwatch or something and, and race yourself on a fly. But if you time yourself with your scissors in your hand and without your scissors in your hand, uh, keeping, your ha keeping them in your hand saves you a tremendous amount of time over the course of a, uh, even a dozen. Um, so if you, can, if you can get used to that and keep them in your hand at all times, that's a big one. Uh, the next one is a uh, whip finisher. Uh, a lot of times, um, you know, I, I know people that finish them with their hands, uh, which is fine. Uh, I used to do that for every fly. Um, but what I had trouble with was when I was using a lighter OT thread, uh, I tend to snap it. And, the, you know, if you snap your line, you have to restart it, and, uh, you know, that wastes a lot of time, and it, it's just a little bit more efficient to use a whip finisher if you're using, like, 8 OT or less. If you're using anything above that, using your fingers should be no problem, and that, again, eliminates using a tool. Um, but anything below 8 OT, I have trouble with it snapping off uh, a little too soon. Uh, hackle pliers. I rarely even use hackle pliers. Uh, even on even on tiny tiny trico patterns, um, you know, if you can get used to just wrapping hackle with your fingers, uh, that's the easiest way, uh, and it, it totally eliminates an, an entire tool uh, use of a tool in one fly. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of times, uh, hackle pliers. You know, you can't have the same feel as you can with your fingers. Also. Um, there is a couple a couple new pliers out there that swivel at the head, uh, and I have tried those, and those are nice. But again, it's an it's an extra tool you have to pick up and set down every time. Well, I hope you enjoyed the first clip of uh, fly tying this winter. Um, we're going to try to keep these coming, like I said, uh, and obviously this is a pretty basic one. Uh, they're going to get a little bit more advanced, and we're going to actually put some thread on a hook. Um, but uh, a little bit of homework for you: if you start doing that, clean up your fly tying area, start sizing some hackle and you'll be ready to go for the next one.